Hi everyone, this is Hell Awesome with your daily dose of awesome and happy new year to my returning subscribers. It's 2017, can you believe it? That's insane. All right, let's get into this. I'm gonna do a do part book review for you guys because I have got to, again, rush this back to the library like now. <laughs> oh, I'm always late on this stuff. I can never seem to, anyway. So the first book review is one I actually own, Holly Madison's Down the Rabbit Hole, Curious Adventures and Cautionary Tales of a Former Playboy Bunny. Now, this book entails Holly Madison's adventures and how she became so, you know, interlinked to Playboy. Basically, she originally auditioned for uh, a playmate, but she didn't get accepted. So, what happened was they said, well, we can use you for Cyber Girl, and she said, sure, whatever. And her photos were put on Cyber Girl, which is basically nothing. It's for the rejects uh, that she says in her books. And, um... And then pretty much she moved to LA in hopes of, you know, making it and also she moved to go to school. She was studying psychology at the time, but she had massed a large debt to, you know, obviously her student loans and stuff and was working at Hooters at the time and living with a roommate. But unfortunately that roommate was moving out. And then uh, a couple of her friends from Hooters uh, went to party at the Playboy Mansion and Holly got to know some of the old girlfriends, the original seven she called them. Uh, original seven girlfriends at the time and basically they made her think that it would be very glamorous to live at the playboy mansion and so holly thought why not give it a chance and live there they made it seem so glamorous and they thought you know and she thought it was going to be such a fun time so she obviously became one of the girlfriends. Now, what they hadn't told her is that it's a prerequisite that you do have to sleep with Hugh Hefner, and all the girls kind of um, in the room make it seem that they're touching each other and having a big old lesbian orgy while porn plays in the background. Hugh doesn't really notice that they are not into it and that they're completely trying to fake it, so he doesn't notice that they're faking it. And Holly basically had her first time with Mr. Hefner at the mansion, and she said it really, she was so drunk that she couldn't really remember anything on top of a hard body being on hers. She also recalls um, how most of the girlfriends would pick on her, and that it was popular to pick on her at the time. Because Hefner, you know, excluded her, saying, why can't you girls be more like Holly? Because she really wasn't that much of a party girl, she was more of a homebody, she never really went out. And in the book, she entails her first meeting with Kendra. She said that Kendra was the fakest person she's ever met. And that one time when uh, Holly brought Kendra a gift, which were which was an expensive pair of, I think, pants or a, a, a sweater or whatever. And Kendra said, oh, you know, I love it. Of course, I'll wear it. And then Kendra decides to wear an outfit completely outrageous and with red lipstick. And Holly remembered one time when she got yelled at and berated by Mr. Hefner for wearing red lipstick. And she thought Kendra was really going to get it because she wore red lipstick. But instead, Hugh said how pretty Kendra was and Holly couldn't believe it. How he just let her get away with this. Meanwhile, she was berated and belittled for just simple things like that. And then in continuing in the book, she talks about how Bridget was her only friend and her moment of suicide after pretty much living in the mansion for only a year. Where she just thought, what if I just put my head under the water? Would anyone miss me? And she was in a really dark place at the time with uh, everything going on in the mansion. Also, uh, there was a lot of games going on because Kendra was really mean to Holly and Br and also like kind of mean to Bridget. Kendra always did things with a very backstabby way. She was very catty. And Kendra always snuck around and but would sleep with everybody during mansion parties. Holly recalled how Kendra was so desperate to get out of the mansion that she would flirt with everybody hoping somebody would just whisk her away from here and also how holly says there's rules you know they have a curfew they have a spending allowance they're not allowed to have outside jobs and also she recalls that they're, they're not allowed to talk to mansion staff because apparently one time a former playmate got, fell in love with a butler and they ran away together and he, mr hefner was very insulted by that so he made it a rule that they cannot talk to the mansion staff and Holly basically also details in the book uh, how the show basically changed everything because they'd have to sleep with Hugh Hefner every like mon Monday or Wednesday during club nights. When they'd come back from the club, Hefner would have them all do a little orgy and sleep together. 
and sleep with him, but when the show came around and was stroking his ego, he no longer felt the need to have the girls stroke his ego. So, with thanks to the girls next door, the sex was not there anymore, and she was so grateful for that reprieve. And in, in, and also the book goes on to say, you know, how Bridget was her saving grace as a friend, and how Holly felt that when her first trip to Vegas, like her second trip to Vegas, really opened her eyes because Hefner hired a PI to follow her around Vegas and to take pictures and report back to him. And she realized that he was a horrible person without the girls there. And she told him that they were done, they were over. She couldn't take it anymore. <clears throat> and Hefner said, fine. Um, she came back home to get her stuff and he left out his will, leaving $3 million in his will had she stayed because season five was supposed to be her and have her working at Playboy Studio and basically just go living her day-to-day -day life. And Kendra, and Kendra and Bridget were already gone. Kendra got married to Hank and started Ken, and started her own show, Kendra. And Bridget started Bridget's Beaches, which is a travel show. And Holly decided that at the time she just was going to leave. She really had no plans. But she remembered that she got an offer to do Dancing with the Stars. So she d took the last minute offer and left Playboy behind and was on a mission to reinvent herself and the horrible years of abuse and mental and mental and emotional abuse she endured at the Playboy Mansion she was hoping she would leave behind forever and that she really wasn't that raunchy girl from Girls Next Door which you will recall was a very popular show in late 2004 that I have a few seasons I got like season one and season two they're really it's a really funny show but yeah they um they were supposed to be originally called Hef's World she, Holly talks about how Hef wanted it to be all about him, but they, the producers, you know, stroked his ego for a bit. But when they saw that it wasn't really a selling point, Hef agreed to let it be about the girls. Now, Holly came out with another book called The Vegas Diaries. Now, this book is her life after Hef and the girls. In Vegas, she got to date quite a few different people. She got to date a billionaire but she changed the names. She got to date a boy band member. She talks about how her first, in um, when she was younger, how her first run-in with a famous person was. He was in a famous boy band, and it was like the war of the boy bands. There was this one band, I think it's either somebody from NSYNC or Backstreet Boys that she dated, because that was the war of the boy bands that I remember. And at the time, she was working at Hooters, and this guy looked like a young Fabio. They went on on a few dates, but she realized he was a jerk because he would always call on her, and he would always ask her to drop everything and make up an excuse why he wasn't available for her or why he was doing this or that, or why he never wanted to be photographed with her. And uh, then afterwards, she recalls how she moved into the suite after doing Dancing with the Stars. She was supposed to do Crazy Horse Paris, which when she was on Girls Next Door, she really admired the dancing girls and um, basically what had happened was how they kind of canceled that agreement because uh something it just fell through because holly was dating chris angel or another famous person at the time and she put a boy above you know career goals and she regretted that and then pretty much after her and chris broke up she got an offer to do a burlesque thing at uh, MGM Grand, which would become Peep Show, which she did for like seven or eight years, I think. In this book, she details her time at Peep Show, how she fell in love with one of her co-stars at Peep Show, but he was unfortunately gay. And uh, she also details backsta backstage fighting with a, with a girl named Lindsay and another girl named Nancy. I'm guessing they were they were on Holly's World when she got her own TV pilot. And she was afraid that, you know, most of her new friends would ditch her again because when she was no longer a lady of the manor at Playboy, most of her playmate friends ditched her, you know? And then uh, she also recalls how when she did Dancing with the Stars, she was supposed to also go to Bridget's uh, wedding thing or whatever, and she forgot. Well, she didn't forget. She apologized, but she was too, you know, beat up from rehearsals to even move. So she texted her friend and said she couldn't come to her uh, wedding thing or whatever she went to the wedding but I'm guessing this was like a party for whatever and then uh, she talks about like dating in Vegas and how uh, she knew one guy named Jeffrey she changed his name obviously he was dating her for the fame 
and he was kind of a jerk. And then she dated a, the rich guy that she dumped her very sweet guy named Mark for. And she regretted because the rich guy was more about the chase than about actually dating her. He was very all about himself and talked about him and never really cared about her. And then when they broke up, he really didn't care about the breakup at all. And Holly kind of was upset that he didn't consider her worthy enough to, I guess, pine over or maybe, you know, at least care that they broke up or even fight for her. She was very upset about that in the book. And she talks about, you know, living at the hotel and then scary fans or haters that came to her door and tried to come into her house. And Holly obviously called the police. And then apparently the MGM Grant was getting scary phone calls about Holly and Peep Show and stuff like that. And then she goes on in the book to talk about how uh, being in Peep Show, doing extra... And doing her own TV show was very fulfilling. But uh, when uh, the reason Holly World, Holly's World got canceled was because uh, E! became new management. And that guy didn't really see the need for too many Playboy shows or girl or whatever. So Holly's World did not get renewed. And basically Holly was kind of okay with that. She was ready for another chapter in her life. And then she vowed if she met another nice guy, she would definitely keep holding on to him like she did with Mark. She wouldn't be a jerk to him. She would value their relationship way more. And uh, basically in the book, she also talks about how they went to a haunted mansion and saw the scary parts in like the desert in the mansion and how it was abandoned and how there's rumors that people died there and strange happenings. And basically she talks about her friend Angel moving into her house in Vegas and how she was sick of always everybody asking how she felt about Playboy. And she talks about how when she went to Vegas the first time with Hef and the girls before Girls Next Door premiered, when it was the seven of them, how her and this other new girl were kind of left out purposely by the other girlfriends. And basically stayed in the hotel, got massages, kind of like that thing. And how they went to clubs in Vegas and stuff like that. And how she got into a fight with another one of the girlfriends because she wouldn't move because there was a hierarchy of girlfriends and she was low girl on the totem pole and she wouldn't move because she had to undo one of the buckles on her shoes and then one of the girlfriends, you know, started making fun of her and the fr the gr other girlfriend that was new with Holly kind of didn't really stand up for her because she didn't want to cause waves, I guess, or she was chicken and Holly understood and she was feeling really crappy during that entire Vegas trip because of the other girls being um, amazingly vicious towards her. These girls were wretched. And then Holly talks about how she was really pissed off when Holly World came, Holly's World came up on TV because a lot of the people wanted to have her talk about Pete Wentz and how she was dating him when she wasn't and she wasn't going to bring that up and they even contacted Pete to talk about being on her show and she really hated that because she thought she had more control over this show and it wasn't fake like Girls Next Door. So yeah this book talks about her life in Vegas and then how um, later on she goes on to meet Pascal and has her daughter Rainbow and I think now she's pregnant with her son. So it's a really sweet book, and it's it, this book is Wizard of Oz themed, whereas the other one was Alice in Wonderland themed. So in both of those, she talks about, and she even has quotes from each of the books that fit the theme of the chapter, which is a very delightful read, I think. I don't think it's weird. I think it's a really, it adds something to the book. And uh, then uh, basically what you see is not what you get. With Holly Madison, she's got layers, and I actually didn't like her in Girls Next Door, but then by reading her books, I thought she was a sweet person who was just kind of put into a horrible circumstance, and then the Girls Next Door kind of got her out of it, um, and, you know, I liked Girls Next Door because it was a funny show, I also kind of... Realize that, you know, reality TV is fake. I mean, everything on reality TV is fake. So, I, I think that you, it's a good idea to read these books. I know a lot of people are saying she's just using it to get famous because she's not relevant. And believe me, I thought that too going in and reading the books. I thought she was just going to use it to, you know, bash Playboy and just use them 
for more fame or whatever recognition but reading the books I realized that she's not about that she's just explaining her story her way for the first time in a long time and I think that that says a lot about her and it's it's a really good book all right so I give obviously I'm gonna write them uh I give Curious Adventures and Cautionary Tales a 10 out of 10 and I give this one a hundred out of a hundred because this it's a follow-up sequel and it's even better than the first. It really talks about living in Vegas and what it's like. So I hope these this book top book top book talk was helpful for you guys and I will see you next time. All the best. Hello awesome. Bye.